Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here in Chino, California at one of the world's coolest aviation museums, the Planes of Fame Air Museum a collection of not only extraordinary airplanes, but even more extraordinary. Some of them uh, get flown on a regular basis. And joining us is Harry Geyer, who's part of the uh, extraordinary team here at this extraordinary museum. You know, you were giving us kind of the quick tour and we're gonna do each individual videos on these airplanes, but that really amazing early build Corsair you guys have. You have a Ryan Fireball, which was a combination piston uh, jet, jet aircraft in this uh, hangar. You know, we've got an Aero Comet, which is, uh, you know, one of six surviving Aero Comets, which was America's uh, first uh, uh, jet by Bell. Uh, Bell is uh, one of the sponsors of our, our website. Um, I, Harry, I wanted to ask you, talk to us about this incredibly historic, incredibly important airplane. It's a Northrop, it's a flying wing. You fly it, actually, and it's only one of a handful of flying wings uh, that was were so revolutionary. Tell us about this airplane. Behind me here is the Northrop N9MB flying wing. It is uh, built in 19, first flown in 1945. It is one of four test models. It's the fourth in a series of four test models to um, get the basic characteristics of flight for when they were going to build the full-size bomber. That's right, because uh, Jack Northrup uh, had this vision of a flying wing, uh, which he viewed less less drag. Talk to us a little bit about the advantages. You know, why was Jack Northrup on this this crusade to build a flying wing? Well, he was uh, looking for something other than basic wing and tube design. He wanted less drag. He wanted it to be very efficient, and he wanted to have a very low. Uh, profile or a visibility aspect to it uh, but mainly it was I think it was after efficiency with it. So tell us when you guys got the airplane and how much work that it's taken to bring it back into flying status. We started restoring this aircraft in 1989 it took us about 15 years to restore it it's made out of wood um, three sections two outer wing sections and a center section and um, Boy, there's all volunteers rebuilt it for the museum here, and now we regularly fly it at air shows around Southern California and California itself. Um, and, and I think you guys got it in your collection in, in 1981. Talk to us about how you keep an airplane like this flying, right? I mean, almost everything on it is unique. It's custom. The engine was a custom eight-cylinder flat eight made by Franklin specifically for uh, for the program, the parts in it are not, the, you know, talk to us about how you guys keep all of this stuff running. Well, the main thing is to keep everything safe and flying airworthy um, as best as possible. We have mainly volunteers working on it, but very talented volunteers. Many of them have a lot of flight hours and AIs, APs. Um, so with, within doing that, our main thing is to keep everything safe and flying as is uh, originally and try not to do our own testing on it. Um, we get all the original manuals that we can and go from there. The engineering from Northrop itself is fantastic and uh, it's gonna be hard to improve upon that. Uh, then we have very few pilots that are checked out in this, but most of the pilots are high time pilots. They, um, most of them started out flying the Cubs, Stearman, T6, P-51s other aircraft like that and are still um, career pilots flying for airlines and stuff. So we have um, a couple pilots that fly this regularly. And uh, uh, is, it, is it a challenging plane to fly or is it an easy plane to fly? From what I hear, it's a, a unique plane to fly. It's uh, made to simulate what a bomber would feel like. So you, it's not really a made to feel like a nimble aircraft. Um, it was supposed to represent the bomber that it was flying. Uh, the characteristics and the yaw characteristics, um, I, from what I've heard, you know, they're something that you need to get used to, but it does fly stable. Um, and, and speaking about flying, this airplane was uh, flown uh, by uh, Pete Everest, I think was the pilot who flew it for the last time, legendary test pilot. Uh, and then also uh, General Cardenas also flew this airplane. So if you're, you know, any, any airplane fl fans out there, and then Harry Crosby was, uh, was the, the pilot on it on, on its first flight. Let me go back to like making parts and stuff like that though. To what extent, you know, and I, and, and I know, um, Harry, that you guys are, you know, airworthiness is the number one thing, and you really guys know that you're, you have really priceless artifacts here that you guys are flying. But 
you know, how do you make parts? Because like any airplane, uh, like any mechanical system, you know, things wear out. I'm looking at landing gear that's good enough to eat off of, which means that somebody had to do an awful lot of work to put it back into that kind of spec. Talk to us, not only the TLC part of it, but where you guys go to rebuild, remanufacture some of these parts that were for airplanes that were one-offs to start with. Well, a lot of the wood parts we make out of wood, you know, in the wood shop um, and put them together as they were originally made. Then um, the other part, sometimes we will have to um, upgrade a, say, a hydraulic pump or the front nose gear and things like that. So we'll find them that were in use for possibly a different aircraft or the same type of aircraft because this, they only made one of these. So what you're doing is trying to find something that is going to work the best, fit the best, and fulfill its mission. It's, it's, I, I just got to tell you, it's, it just gives you goosebumps when you see something like this and, and a design that was uh, iconic in its time, came back around as the B-2 and now is, is also a template for the B-21 Raider. So the flying wing uh, was, was a winning design, even if people then didn't think it was. Yeah, there was a lot of um, politics involved back then. And if you watch the Northrop video, there's a couple things you could watch on the Internet that explains it. Um, in a couple different perspectives. Uh, I think the, the B-52, the B-36, B-52, things like that that went on to, um, that the Air Force chose instead of the B-2, let's say, or the um, B-47, was, uh, it was a good choice too. I mean, B-52 has <laughs> really proven itself. And so there's a, a, lot of, a lot of controversy about the flying wing compared to the wing and tube bomber right but uh yeah, look b-52 is a, is just another uh, incredible icon that's we will be long retired and and folks will still be flying the 52. now let's go and take a look at the era comet which is really pretty incredible as well all right let's go